Afternoon, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Unfavorable Matchup Series. Starting off, we're going to get you with Diego Sanchez. He's a C-plus fighter in this division. I'm going against a Rafael Dos Anjos. Now, with uh, Ra RDA, he has solid striking. He has solid grappling. The one thing Diego Sanchez has going for him is that he has a decent grappling, decent combinations as well. But he also fights like a little bit like a wild man, so I'm trying to be a little bit unpredictable. I'm trying to just attack as much as I can, but I noticed that this player has some good fundamental defense. I see that he's trying to pull immediately when I try to overcommit going forward. You see that? Goes for a pull leg kick, and I managed to get the clinch. I got to try to slow down the fight and get my opponent thinking. That's my goal with, uh, especially with like lower rated fighters that have some kind of grappling behind them. But I also have to be cognizant of what my opponent offers and brings to the table. So this is, I can already right off the gate kind of see that this RDA has good defense. But he whips on a light kick and I immediately go for the sweep single. When you have a lower rated uh, fighter, you have to be aware of where you don't want to be. And for example here, I don't think Diego Sanchez's sub defense is pretty high. So I don't really want to be in his guard. I know RDA doesn't have any subs from side control or anything from here. So I want to always be focused on control. I don't know if you guys watched Diego Sanchez's fight against uh, Mickey Gal, but he freaking <laughs> ran through the guy. But here I made a huge error, got reversed into side control. He, see that animation? How it was so delayed that first fake? That was that was a fake I could have denied, but I let it slide for too long. But he decided to pull it back for some reason. And it, as the guy on bottom, especially against somebody that has a workhorse, and uh, I think like a 90-something top game, I gotta be patient. I gotta hope for like the ref to try to stand this up, <laughs> and he does. I don't want to get caught in that arm triangle that RDA has. We're back up on the feet. It's a three-round fight, thankfully. So stamina, depending on how he fights, it won't be too much of an issue. That was nice. Pull body hook. But it seems to me every second strike that I throw, this guy's ready to pull or counter. I'm trying to time a head kick if he tries to come in and move his head. Diego's our highest level moves are his hooks and his uppercuts. I really want to stick to using that. Follow up most of my combinations with hooks and, and uppercuts. But he's doing this guy's doing a good job of mixing it up, going hook to the head, hook to the body, but fire off a leg kick of my own. They're a bit too close. Oh so I don't want to be here. There's a lot of characters that you don't want to be underneath. RDA is one of them because he has again that top game, but he also has the guillotine. But yeah, time to head kick. Oh, he freaking slipped it. I had he body rocked me. Oh, my. He was too close to the body hook. Did not, the body kick did not do as much damage as he would have liked. Had he stayed in kicking range and threw that body kick, it would have got me again. But there, that pull count. My own pull counter got me in trouble. I didn't expect him to slip that uppercut. But now I hit him with another head kick. And right there, that kind of told me, was that really timed? Was that slip straight really perfectly timed? As I went for a slip straight uppercut, and as I saw him go for it again as he was rocked, my guess was no. It wasn't time. He didn't know I was going to throw a slip straight uppercut. He just assumed I was going to go crazy with uh, straight strikes to break his block, and he w had the right prediction there. But the second time I rocked him, he went for it right out the gate. And I could have followed up with a hook there. Now, I don't know who won that round. That was a really close round. I think I might have stolen it back with the second rock to the head. But yeah, things could have got really terrible <laughs> for me there. And that's the thing with these lower rated characters. Their health stats are so low. And a lot of it for not too good of a reason. Like Chad LaPriest has 80 body health for some reason. And I don't think anything in his fights have shown me that he warrants an 80 body health. I understand that higher le level fighters, you know, the best of the best, they tend to be better. They can do certain things better than other fighters. But I don't necessarily think that warrants that they sh the other guy should have really really low health stats i mean if you saw dan hooker versus barboza barboza obviously was the better kickboxer in that fight but hooker could take some freaking hits and the striking was there too gotta slow things down again just keep the guy guessing keep him thinking but jeez man that was that was a, that first round i could have i could have been out right there the first round i've landed those uh body kicks on a mcgregor that's pulling back and not gotten a freaking body rock right out the gate Trying to time the head kick again. Slip straight knee hook of my own. 
I just gotta slow things down with Diego. Trying to get the clinch. I want this guy to focus on the clinch. If I get him focused on the clinch, hopefully that'll open up his head so I can land some strikes to kind of bring down that chin. I don't get why RDA has a low chin. He really shouldn't. I, I don't think he should have an 88. He should at least have a 90. Uh, right there, I pre denied the hell out of a takedown. Got that hit reaction. For those of you who haven't seen my takedown guide, if somebody, uh, if their back is turned to you after they whiff a leg kick and you immediately put in a double leg, you're gonna get an auto takedown to side control, to a backside. I was just kind of planting and ripping the combination, hoping that I slip in. He's going jab straight. No, jab lead hook straight. Good lunge. He waited too long there. He, when you lunge with your block on, the only uh, downside is that it's harder for that strike to come out. Had he lunged without his block, he would have been able to fire off that head kick. Of course, there's a risk there, and that's with uh, strikes getting blocked. Uh, I don't want to go for that. Don't want to go for the sub yet. He goes up again. For those of you who don't know, like even guys that have the anaconda, because the guillotine and the anaconda are like pretty goddamn similar. A lot of guys with the anaconda do have uh, the guillotine reversal. They were trying to time him as he was punching it, punching the air, trying to time a head kick again. I think they did a pretty good job this round. Good body kick for him, but he's a little bit too close. And I'm just stepping into range, and I'm seeing what his uh, reaction is going to be. Still, him again was a good hard shot. And I dropped him. He made a mistake of firing back on my third strike. And at, I guess he tried to go to the body or something. But he got nailed by the uppercut. And his shit is low. Little tip. If you see, uh, you know, if you can't see your opponent's HUD. But you see that they're eating hit reactions really soon. You know, like eating it really bad. Almost every time you strike, that means their chin health is low. The chin, uh, the chin meter is a separate meter. But that pretty much determines what uh, what's kind of stops you. Like there's head health. But as you, your head health gets lower, it's easier to kind of stun and get those hit reactions. Good, now he's playing it. Ah, I thought he had a front kick, so I ended up throwing out a body hook. Now he's kind of waiting. He's just waiting for me to make a mistake. I don't know why I wasn't doing a good job of uh, denying that escape. Usually I deny that really well. I stun him with that hook there. See, it shows that I'm land outlanding him and uh, strikes landed. But again, my defense still has to be pretty up there. It just takes one mistake. I duck into one uppercut or I sway into a hook with Diego. I'm probably not going to get up. And he's looking for that left. And you just got to be persistent with the clutch. Persistent, persistent, persistent. He's going with that jabbly body hook. Here, kind of questioning it. There, there's a good shot. I went for the clinch and he nailed me with that body hook and it did extra damage because my body was exposed. And I get that he's trying to, like, maybe get a body health event. But there's three minutes left in the last round. And this is where I kind of realized with a lot of people. They kind of continue to throw certain things that are low risk. I guess medium kind of reward. But the clock is ticking. I'm not going to get body hook prevented by those lead body hooks. Unless I really mess up. And he goes to the body. Gets hit by the hook. Gets stunned. There, I don't think I had a stamina advantage there. So I didn't get the spirit to side control. But I did get that contextual transition. So, so I must have had a slight stamina advantage, not 50%. And the ref said do something, so that means his chin health is low. He's doing a good job faking while he's down there, so he gets the full guard. I get the stack guard. Now, here's a little tip here. You see the hand that was holding my head in full guard? When I go up to stack guard, I do not want to punch to that side. If I punch to that side, that's where he can get a sub. I forgot already had that. Try to get that momentum guillotine. <laughs> he was not having any part of it. But if you have a minute left in the fight. And there's a good chance. I don't know. That first round was a toss up round. At least to me. But I feel like I won the second. And I definitely won the third. I mean as far as damage goes. Because the game scores damage primarily. Before anything else. I think octagon control is like the last thing that they look at. If, unless the damage is almost equal octagon control is not looked at <laughs> i think grappling is kind of viewed second if they strike it is also even to kind of look at control and i'm gassed but you know as long as i take away kicking range from him he's not going to land another body kick he's orthodox with rda and he gets dropped and if you're wondering how i dropped him there 
with feints and small strikes, your stamina has to recover. His has to recover. It's about five seconds left. He's not getting out of here. Might as well go for the knee bar. Like, you know, if you faint your way in, you also have to be reminded that that does cost stamina. And if you're throwing small strikes and you don't let your stamina recover all the way, be aware that you're going to eat more damage from his strikes if he plants as you reset. And there they showed the slip straight he nailed me with. Got that stun. Tagged him with an uppercut as he went to the body. He was pretty predictable in that sense. He had good things in mind. Don't get me wrong. This guy had a lot of good things in mind. But I dropped him again. His timing, his timing is what cost him, and his variety is what cost him. So, let's see this decision. Thirty twenty-seven. Sorry, I got a clean sweep on all the judges' scorecards. This is pretty risky. I, I wonder how it would have gone if I would have gone against a McGregor player. But maybe I could have just taken him down and put him in crucifix. But tough matchup. C plus versus A against RDA. But managed to get the unanimous decision win with Diego the Nightmare Sanchez. On to the next fight. In the history of unfavorable matchups, I think this has to be the most ironic one. Because yeah, I could have gone against Aldo, Zabit, Edgar really too. But Alex Caceres, you know, who's a B, you know, he was uh, very hyped up a lot because, you know, his name Bruce Leroy Caceres because he had that style where like, he was doing all that kung fu crazy stuff. He has a lot of losses by submission. A lot of losses by submission. I think he has like about five. No, no, seven. Seven. I think he has seven losses by submission. Out of his 12 losses, seven of them. And I'm going against Brian Ortega, who's a freaking sub artist. And has like 97 something sub offense or something crazy like that. He's also lost a lot of. I think he's lost like two split decisions to Caceres. He fought Yair Rodriguez and lost by split decision. That was a fun fight. You guys should definitely go back and watch that. I was fighting tonight. I think it was a five round fight. And if he went five rounds with Yair Rodriguez, I don't get why his stamina isn't higher. That's another thing. Like, they gave this guy low striking stamina, but he went toe to toe with Yair Rodriguez. Who has a 93 striking stamina in this game. So that's another little thing that kind of hurts me. But. Alright. Here against Brian Ortega. With Caceres. I'm going to fight the way he should fight. And that's going to be trying to keep things on the outside. And use my tools. If I see this guy's trying to sidestep. I have to throw body kicks. And pre-deny. The body kick catch takedown. Which is by holding R2 and down. And he's trying to overwhelm me with strikes. Ortega players. They all play relatively similar. It's either they try to get you focused on the punches, get you to the clinch, kind of like what I was doing with Sanchez. And I can tell this guy's getting a little bit frustrated. And I'm not going to... Oh, my gosh. It's it's worrying because with Ortega, the guy doesn't even have to be that good. <laughs> the grappling is such an equalizer in this game. And there's a sub there, so I have to get out of there. That I could be winning the entirety of a fight. And if I get caught in that two-state submission, if he denies one transition, it's almost guaranteed to be over. I don't see that he's kind of cycling jab straight lead hook, and he's going jab straight hook to the body. They, just as I was talking about that last fight, you know, the strikes did a little bit more damage. I just got to keep him on the outside. He's got to keep him on. Just get out of my face, bro. <laughs> I'm not trying to get subbed. I'm surprised he hasn't gone for like a driving takedown. Yeah, with a head kick there. Another front kick. He's got circle. He's got circle. Circle. Move. Keep it moving. Keep it moving. Uh, no, 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 no. If there's one good thing about Ortega, is that. Oh man, he even has some stuff there from back clinch, man. But one good thing, is, uh, good thing about fighting Ortega, is that he has only 87 takedown offense, so he can hit the low single on you. And that's what this guy should be doing because I use those takedown counters. So he should be focused on using the low single. He should try to duck my strike and it hit me with double unders. Because if you duck a hook and go for double unders, I swear to you that transition is ridiculously fast, man. Instead, he keeps going for like the single collar, which I don't get. Keep him off me. He's kind of waiting. He's waiting. He's, <laughs> he's kind of waiting it out. I can tell he's getting a little bit frustrated. Yo, speaking about Caceres, he does have five wins by sub, but I'm definitely not going to sub Ortega. 
A little cheeky trip there just to score some points. Going to fight smart. Got to fight smart. Especially when I know what my weaknesses are. If I go to the ground against Ortega, the clinch I can kind of hold my own, but the ground his transition is going to be so much faster than mine. Keep moving. Lunge it to the outside. Work up the body. Work up the head. Faith that side kick. A little thing I started doing. Once I see guys trying to sidestep, I'll fake the sidekick, and if he tries to sidestep me, no! If he tries to sidestep me, I'll start firing off some hooks. So I'll fake the side the sidekick. If I see the sidestep, I immediately start firing off some hooks, and then I'll hit them as their stamina gets a little bit low from using that sidestep, and it does a good amount of damage. Now, it says you have submission. Da, 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 da. I'm not going to the ground with Ortega. I don't know if this game is smoking. <laughs> I was not going to the ground with Ortega. Nah, we're not doing that. But the game plan is working. This guy hasn't really made any adjustments. I don't get why he's not using enough kicks. Good body kick there, as I said that. But again, he's using the same combinations. Jab, straight, hook. It's, it's always jab, straight, hook. It's, a, it's two strikes that are straight. And then it's a hook at the end. <laughs> jab, uppercut, hook. Hit the front kick off there. Just got to keep myself moving. Keep myself moving. And the more space, the better. The more space for me, the better. Try to counter hard there. See, I don't even have his chin. I think Ortega's chin is like a 93 or something crazy like that. I know it got buffed after the max fight. Yeah, I don't think that hook should hit me. There it is. Now we're, we're going to triple up on those counters. Do more damage. Now he's going to jab, hook, hook. He changes things up. I think he sidestepped it there. I'll take that knee even though it's meant to be a sidekick. Yeah, I don't I don't get why that hook is hitting me there. I know I'm pulling it at the right time. But that hook should not be hitting me there. No, no, no. We're going to go regular takedown. No, no, no. The risky thing about the takedown counters, I don't think a lot of people know, is that not only does it kind of condition you, and you'll have a hard time uh, blocking the low single, but if the guy has a better clinch grappling stat, if he kind of preloads his transition before, when you get to double unders, if this guy preloads and gets to over under, and he goes for that triangle choke, I am in trouble. So I gotta go back to using regular denials. He's rocked here, wobble combo for the win, and he gets me the clinch. And he denied that. No. <laughs> oh, and he denied that too. Oh dear God, no. We're not going down there. That's for that 87. Oh my God, what am I doing? Oh, what the? F yeah, I'm in trouble. I am in trouble. I am in so much trouble. Oh, and he has me a side title. Oh, it's better that than backside. Backside, he has a sub from there. He didn't deny that. Okay, we flipped him over. All right, so with Ortega, the position you got to be worried about, side control, obviously. He has the Kimura, and I think he has the inverted triangle. Side title, he has the arm triangle as well. I don't know if he has the arm bar. If you're on bottom, like where he is now, the position was reversed, and I try to go backside, he can hit me with a knee bar counter. And I do not want any part of that. Takes my back, I'm fucked. <laughs> it takes my back, I'm fucked. So there's so many positions you gotta worry about. So I'm looking for the free get up. So positions like side control, top mount, that's where I wanna be. Use the retreat there, back up, get some space, hit with a front kick. Just constantly getting this guy to pause and think. Jesus Christ. How did I miss that kick? He could have shot a takedown there. Obviously, that would have helped him. But if he would have fired off an overhand while my stamina was that low, he could have knocked me out with one second left. I, I don't know if this guy can see my head or not. I can't see his. But, oh, that would have been terrible. Still, the plan is to stick to the game plan. He had some a lot of success in the clinch, but he just got dropped. I'm not going to pursue the finish. When you try to pursue the finish, especially when you have a lower rated fighter, it tends to get you in trouble. Oh boy. I got the drop, so I know I can just kind of play keep away and circle, circle, circle. You stay away. Keep him on the outside. Let him respect my space. That was a good straight out entry. So you see, I don't know if you guys peep what he did there, right? So he threw two strikes. He knew that I was going to try to pull. So he did two strikes. I tried to pull. My head is in the back. And then he fired off with two more strikes. 
and that's a really smart thing to do against somebody pulling because once you get them focused on reacting to you and you just keep slowly but surely lowering the head off because they're getting caught it, it does a lot of damage and with Caceres I don't think his shit off is too high just waiting 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 he's playing a little game with footsies Ooh. I don't know why like the videos have been skipping that's kind of why I kinda can't do like live commentary Okay, that hook doesn't. I have to pause after I land that slip straight so that hook can land. Desperate, desperate, desperate. It's a back glitch. Get the hell out. Free suplex for scoring points, and I am out of here. Oh, we. He's gassed. I could have nailed him with that duckies uppercut. Good clinch, good clinch. Nice to preload that tie clinch. Get him out of there. You just keep coming at me like a zombie, bro. Got a body rock. Again, don't force to finish. I'm not going in his guard. Had I pressed the button and tried to rush, he could have caught me so bad with a, a sub. I was fighting a uh, heap of dream one time, and he had uh, Ortega. I had Aldo. And he, the motherfucker pre denied to the left. See, he, he could have taken me down. He didn't realize I was... And I got rocked. I tried to duck it. I tried to duck it. He's too tall. I could have duck it. And I have a minute left. And if he gets me in any position where he can sub me, I am screwed. Got the reversal, though. His stamina was low, so he goes straight to soccer control. I'm out. But yeah, I started heaving the dream. I got to full guard posture up. I'll, I never like to go straight up because there's a, there's a reversal that leads to the guy being a top mount. And it could get a, a sub. So... Uh, Oh man, if he would have, if I would have jumped on that knockdown and he would have subbed me, oh that would have been terrible. I can't duck, I can't duck. Jesus. He's too close, that body kick will do anything. Drop, and this decision is secured. Good clean work with Alex Bruce Leroy Caceres. Round three. The legs buckle and he's down. Using our lower rated characters, you want to focus more so on neutralizing or what your opponent wants to do, especially when it's a high rated fighter. It's hard to like kind of impose your will, but if you neutralize what your opponent is best at. You, you have a way better chance of winning the fight. Way, way, way better chance of winning the fight. And we got two dubs in a row. Got two solid decisions with these low-rated fighters onto the next fight. Shout out to UFC <laughs> 3 Tips and Tricks. This guy loves Joe Lozon, so I figured I had to get some Joe Lozon action here for this fight. Joe Lozon actually has like a rolling knee bar in OU. Kind of missed that uh, touch, so I just gave him respect to it. But if there's one downside with Lozon, not only is he a C plus, but his chin is an 82. So immediately, I do not want to stand with Gaethje who has like a 94, 96 power, something crazy like that. No, 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 we're not doing that at all. We gotta grapple. We have to impose the grappling, and we gotta kill his. We gotta kill his shin. We gotta kill his shin so we can do some damage ourselves. God, I can't trade with Gaethje. I'm not gonna trade with Gaethje with Joe Lozon, man. I do find it funny that his uh. Shit is an 82. Right, Shit's an 82, but he's, I think he has like six losses by knockout. So, you know, 85 would have been a lot better, but I don't know if that gets uh, Guida. He got finished. <laughs> he got finished on the ground. Quarter stopped the fight against Grusmacher. But he managed to win that fight against Jonathan Pierce with a solid grappler. That's what doing here. We're kind of working. Just killing the clock. Killing the clock. I don't really want to force a finish. I pre it on to the left there. That's how he got out. I gotta stop doing that. But again, forced to grapple. I do not want any part of Justin Gaethje on the feet. We gotta slow him down. It's very good. I used Diego Sanchez first, and I'm going with Lozon. And I think Lozon actually finished Diego Sanchez. He also, he also Lozon actually also has a win over Michael Chiesa. Sometimes it's just unfortunate, man. It's just really unfortunate with some fighters, you know, what they could be. 
And he's not even that old. I don't know why he's old. He's like he's like 35. Edgar's like 35, and he's doing. I think he might be older actually. So for Lozo to still be fighting, obviously other people uh have some things to say about that. You know, about fighting getting a little bit too old. But you know, you got guys like Edgar, guys like Yoel, guys like Souza that can still fight at a high level. If if Joe Lozo still believes in himself, then who am I to judge him? It's also tied for most, like second second most post fight bonus awards with uh, Nate Diaz. Focus on the grappler. Focus on the grappler. Shut this man down. I'm taking virtually no damage. I did not let this guy get a single reversal. This entire first round is under my control, and that's what you have to do with uh, Joe Lozon. Focus on the grappling. Position over submission. That's how a lot of my jiu-jitsu friends like to say. I see that the knee bar's there. I'm gonna work him here. Just focus, focus, focus on working him. Very up that damage. He's focused on blocking the head too much there. All right. All right. You heard what Joe, uh, Joe Rogan said. He said this fight's going to be stopped. The fight is going to be stopped. That means his shit off just got really, really low heading into the second round. And I, I'm sure this guy's thinking like, how the hell is this freaking Joe Loza out grappling me like this? But this is the best way to do it. I think he, this guy might be so focused on not getting caught on either the knee bar when he's in the clinch that I'm getting these takedowns relatively easily. For those who don't know that uh, why Joe Loza has a knee bar, he got the... Knee bar way back in like 2006. So that's why he still has it. Here's a lot of wins by sub too. Sub offense should be pretty high. Let's see how he adjusts. Do that movie slip. He pre denied that. Hell out of that double leg, yo. Oh my god. <laughs> but I didn't lose my stamina. You know, that's a well timed double. He just pre denied it. Just keep him guessing. Keep him guessing. Good lunge. A little bit too late. Ah, uh, I meant to go to tight clinch and I held it down for the single leg. Oh man! Oh, but you know, he wants the whole part of me up down there. Let's go! All right, where his head? Where his head? Lunge and the jab. Ooh, and he's firing off the body hook and gets the clinch. That body vulnerability spikes up when you're going for the clinch. Beautiful combo. Oh, you see how much head off I lose? Even though that straight wasn't in proper range. He denies the hell out of it again. Jesus. All right. This is what. That was that was so smart. That was so smart. Push. Head kick. Smart. Got the clinch. Got slowed down this fight. Oh, he's pre, you see how he's pre-denied the takedown. He's pre-denied the takedown. Oh, my God. Good. Push leg kick. He's making adjustments. I like this. I went to go to tight clinch again. Why am I like this? Why do I dishonor the family like this? I'm so sorry. <laughs> Trying to like fake that little takedown. Trying to get some clinch action. I don't know if I'll, I think Lozon should have over-unders, but I keep doing single call for some reason. Oh, he went to the body. Let's go. Got the spear. Just a one mistake. You know, he was following up with that. Every time I missed the clinch, or he lunged, he'd go to the body, so I kind of timed that uh, uppercut. And as expected, he went to the body. He's focused on the head right now. I don't think Gaethje has any arm traps from here. So I'm just switching things up. Going to alternate body, head, body, head. Aside from the, uh, a few scares on the feet, look at where my head off is at comparison to the rest of my, bo my body, and I'm good. I am fine. And what a lot of people don't realize, you do not want to be in these postured up positions for too long. The hell? Ah, so if you go for the sub, if you go for the knee bar, hey, you try to go up. Ah, uh, he tried to, you saw that he tried to pre the out takedown, fight off a head kick and drop it. So if you try to get up and somebody's going for a knee bar, it's almost a free get up. It's a contextual get up. Interesting. All right. Uh, that's your position. Go for the body lock high. No, the brick beat that too? That's interesting. I guess because uh, my stats aren't high enough. See, I try to duck a head kick, land a straight. 
Here, I can't make any mistakes. I am comfortably ahead in this fight. Comfortably ahead in this fight. Hopefully, I'll do some work with you, man. Jesus. That was a beautiful pull. He did that right off the gate. I thought he would be so focused on trying to uh, deny the clinch that he was going to let me get that free overhead. All right, there I get the tie clinch. Alright. <laughs> Cheeky funny. He's he's fishing for that one big shot to take me out of there. Oh my god, you see that? It just takes it just takes one mistake for me. Trying to pull a little bit too soon. And he goes for the flying knee and he hits me. His shit was done. That jab. That jab finished off his block. I did so much damage with half guard posture up that his block was destroyed and his head off. Uh, shout out to UFC 3 Tips and Tricks. That Joe Lozon <laughs> fight was for you. I'm going to leave a link to your channel in the description for this video. As for everybody else, I got some more unfavorable matchups coming up for you. Yo, it's tough winning with these dudes, man. Like, I, I take some L's <laughs> with some of these guys. and it, it, It's tough because you lose so many points. But... You know, at, at the end of the day, it's all fun. You know, I got to make the adjustments with these lower fighters and use them to the best of their ability. Rail 17, like, comment, share, and subscribe. I'm out of here.